Okay, so here we want to divide the number 191.632 by 8.26. So here we've got our answer choices, 23.2, 23.875, 24, 24.2, and 24.401. So let me be honest, if I, if I saw this problem, um, I would let out an audible groan. Um, but So I'm going to, again, kind of do two things. I'm going to kind of show you the way that, you know, that I would do it properly, you know, assuming I didn't have the solutions. You know, somebody just gave me this and said, do it. Uh, and then I'm going to show you how, uh, like always, how I would start trying to use these solutions to my advantage to try to do this one a little bit quicker. Because there's a something I'll show you in a second. I can immediately narrow it down to one of these two, one of the two, one of the two answers, and then I would just sort of check those two and see which ones work, which one works. But again, let's talk about it the long way first. So we're doing 191.632. I'm dividing that by 8.26. So typically, the way that we're taught to do this, or at least the way I was always taught to do this, is to get rid of the decimals. So you know, notice there's in the numerator, there's after the decimal, there's three numbers. In the denominator, there's only two, but I can always tack a zero on there. It's not going to change its value. So what we're really going to do is we're moving, we're going to move the decimal three places in the numerator and three places in the denominator. I mean, technically what you're doing is multiplying the numerator and the denominator by 1,000. So we've got 191.632 over 8260. Now you could immediately start trying to do long division here, which eventually we're going to have to do, which is going to turn into a real um, a real nightmare. But um, the first thing I would try to do before doing this is try to reduce this fraction. So, you know, I, I, I clearly don't know off the top of my head what's the largest number that goes in the numerator and goes into the denominator, but one thing that at least I can use to my advantage here is, is if they're both even. So if I divide the denominator by 2, well, let's see, I would get 4, 1, 3, 0. That would be the denominator divided by 2. I'm just dividing every digit by by 2. So 18 divided by 2 is 4, 2 divided by 2 is 1, 6 divided by 2 is 3, 0 divided by 0 is 0. The problem is this doesn't quite work in the numerator because I have these odd numbers, this 9 and this 3 and there's 1s. So I'm going to have to do this one the long way. I am going to have to do long division to simplify it. So all right, here we go. So 2 doesn't go into 1, but it goes into 19. 2 will go into 19, what, 9 times? So 2 times 9 is going to be 18. Let's subtract. There's 1. We'll drop down our 1. 2 will go into 11 5 times. 2 times 5 is 10. Again, we'll drop down the 1. And now we'll bring down our 6. So 2 goes into 6 8 times. 18 times 2 is 16. So let's drop down the 3. 2 will go into 3 once. 1 multiplied by 2 is 2. Subtract. Drop down the 2. Uh, let's see. And then I think 2 goes into 12 how many times? Well, 6 times. So now I'm left with 9, 5, 8, 1, 6. So again, they're both even in this case, which means, which means originally 4 must have went into both of these numbers. But OK. Um, that's how it goes. So I'm just going to keep. I'm going to do. I'm going to do it again. I'm going to just again divide numerator and denominator by two. So what I'm trying to do is just trying to make the long division, the numbers that appear as small as possible, just to uh, hopefully make my life a little bit easier. Okay, so. And I'm going to do the denominator again. This is one I can do in my head. So 4,000 divided by 2, that would be 2,000. So there's my 2. Let's see, what's 130 divided by 2? Let's see, I think, uh, so 60, if it was 120 divided by 2, that would give us 60. So I think 65 works in this case. Um, so let's see. Um, let's, uh, so 2,065 will be 4130 divided by 2. So... If I multiply that by 2, I'm going to get back where I started. Again, the numerator, 9, 5, 8, 1, 6. I'm going to have to divide this by 2. 
So 2 will go into 9 uh, 4 times. 4 times 2 is 8. We'll subtract. So 2 will go into 15 7 times. 7 times 2 is 14. So uh, 15 minus 14 is 1. Let's drop down the 8. 2 will go into 18 9 times. 9 times 2 is 18. So it'll give us 0. Uh, we'll drop down the 1. 2 will go into 1 0 times. 0 times 2 is 0. So, whoops, so now we'll drop down the 6. 2 will go into 16 8 times. So the numerator divided by 2 is going to be um, 4, 7, 9, 0, 8. Okay, we're having fun. So at this point, you know, they're not both even. Um, you know, I, I'm just going to call it a day at this point and start doing long division, and hopefully something good will happen. For me, if I was taking this test, I assume people don't do them anymore on paper. If this was a paper test where I could come back to the problem, if you can revisit these problems, this is one I would absolutely skip over and come back to at the end, most likely, especially if you didn't see the shortcut that I'm going to show you in a second. Um... If it's one that you have to, you know, if it's one of those computerized tests where you can't backtrack, then make a judgment call, you know, because again, this whole exam is about being fast, okay? So, okay. So in my head, I'm going to start estimating. Um, the number on the outside is 2,000. The number on the top, you know, that's pretty close to, let's say, 48,000. Okay, that's pretty close to 48,000. So... I'm thinking if it was 48,000 divided by 2,000, um, you cancel is that I can cancel out the three zeros. I would be left with 48 divided by 2, which is 24. So I'm thinking this number will go into this number either 24 times or, you know, since I, I, I sort of rounded the, the, the numerator up and the denominator down, I'm thinking 24 is probably actually a little big. So I'm thinking... I'm thinking maybe 23 is going to be the correct value. So, uh, so I think my educated guess here by estimating is that 2,065 will go into 47,908 23 times. That's my guess. So I'm going to check. So 2,065 multiplied by 23. Let's see if that's too big um, or too small or what happens here. So 3 multiplied by 5, that's 15. So... 3 multiplied, we'll carry the 1. 3 multiplied by 6 is 18, plus 1 is going to be uh, 19, so we'll carry the 1. 3 multiplied by 0 is 0, we'll drop down the 1. 3 multiplied by 2 is 6. Okay, so 2 multiplied by 5, that's 10, so we'll keep the 0, again carry the 1. 2 multiplied by 6 is 12, plus 1 is going to give us 13. So again, 2 times 0 plus 1 is 1. 2 times 2 is 4. So let's see, if we add those up, we've got 5, 9, 4, 7, 4. So let's see, 4, 7, 4, 9, 5. That's good because this number is smaller than 47, 9, 0, 8. That's what we want it to be. It's really close as well. So let's see, so I know that if I multiply, so I know that 2,065, if I take 47, 9, 0, 8, 2,065 will go into it 23 times without going over. So we just said 23 times 2065 is this number, 47495. So now we've got to do the subtraction. 8 minus 5 is 3. Okay, so I can't do 0 minus 9, so I've got to borrow. So we'll make the 9 into an 8. We'll make this 10. 10 minus 9 is going to be um, 1. And then 8 minus 4 is going to be 4. Okay, so now, okay, so let's see here. So now we need to drop down our zero. And now I think, yes, I'm in business, because now I'm thinking 2,065 goes into 4130 how many times? We already did that earlier in our reduction, because we said 4130 divided by 2 is this number. So 2,065 multiplied by 2 is going to give me 4130 with zero remainder, so lo and behold, we've now got our solution, 
2 is going to be the correct answer in this case. A couple of things here, again, to point out, you know, sort of the long way. Uh, whenever you have fractions, don't immediately jump into long division. Try to simplify them first. I guarantee you it'll make things, you know, a little bit faster. The other thing, too, when you're trying to do, you know, when I was trying to do 47908 divided by 2065, Estimate. This is one of the best things you can do with arithmetic is just round stuff off because uh, at least you'll have a, a good educated guess about where to start. Um, notice if we had multiplied 2065 by 24, we would have gotten a number that was larger than 47908, which means we need to go smaller. So that would mean, to me would suggest, hey, using 23. Okay, let's talk about a shortcut here real quick because that's what I was saying. You know, this is part of being good at these tests is being a good test taker and using these solutions to your advantage. Um, I didn't always know how to do this stuff as a student, or, you know, the proper way at all times, but I could usually, I was always a good test taker, so I hope some of these, uh, these ideas will help you as well. So 191.632 divided by 8.26, that equals some number. Well, the idea is, right, 191.632, that means if we take that number, which we don't know what it is, and we multiply it by 8.26, at the end of the day, when we multiply, we want to get 191.632 back. That's what we want to do. So I'm thinking, you know, 8.26 multiplied by what? Multiplied by what eventually is going to give me 191.632. That's what I want to happen at the end of the day. So, again, I don't know this number at this point, right? Well, think about it, though. The only way that you're going to be able to get... So, if we start looking at the solutions, look at the, the numbers at the very end. So, one thing I would notice is, you know, there's two answers that both have a .2 in them. So, I would think, ah, that's... That's odd because none of the other decimal values are repeated. None of the other ones are repeated at all. So I would think maybe, you know, if I just had to take a stab at it immediately, I would guess one of those two. But the other thing to notice is, too, eventually you want to get a 2 as the last digit when you multiply. If you multiply by a 5, that's not going to work. Uh, 24 is not going to work. Notice if you multiply something, you know, some number ending in a 2, when you multiply you're going to end up getting, okay, 2 times 6, which is 12, carry the 1. I'm going to end up getting a 2 in that last spot. So that's a very subtle arithmetic reasoning, and I don't expect everyone to be able to catch that at all. But that would be something that I would be noticing. The only way, you know, the only one of these, these solutions that even possibly makes sense is either answer choice A or answer choice B. It's one of those two. So at that point, once I had it narrowed down to those two, I would just brute force check them. I would think, okay, so if I take uh, um, you know, 23.2, and if I multiply that by 8.26, I would be asking myself, at the end of the day, once I do all the work, do I get 191.632 back? If I do, great, I've got the right answer. And you can verify that that one does, in fact, work. Likewise, if I tried 24.2 and didn't get the correct answer, I would immediately know that it's 23.2. That would be the way that I would honestly approach this problem in a test-taking scenario where I've got answer choices in front of me. So, again, it depends on the solutions if you can do that, you know. Um, this, this approach doesn't always work. But, again, just to stress being a good test-taker, and uh, uh, just trying to sort of learn to look out for those things can be useful. So, again, not a fun problem by any stretch. Um, and, you know, this is one of those that's just, it's just really tedious and long. So, again, I'll say it one more time. If it's possible to skip something like this and come back, I absolutely would. Um, you know, if, you, if you're forced, you know, I've had exams where you can't go back. So at that point, you have to make a judgment call. Is it w worth your time to get that one hopefully correct? Or, or not. So it would be easy to make some arithmetic mistakes going through that as well. So anyway, just, just uh, uh, things to ponder and to think about.